So I think we've introduced enough new content for now. Instead of introducing more new content, what we're going to do is use what we've learned so far to build something a little bit more useful than a list of numbers. What we're going to do is build a little input validation. When the value is not long enough, we're going to show an error message. So for example, the, we might have a username where there's a minimum of seven characters. If the character limit is too low, we're going to show an error. Otherwise, we're going to show no error. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a new input, and we're going to use some of the skills we've learned so far. The first one we're going to use is the at binding, which is short for von, and this is going to listen for an event. And we're going to listen for the input event, and when the input is there, we're going to call a function called input as well. Of course, this function can be whatever you like. I'm just going to call it input to keep it simple. Let's go ahead and create that function. So we're going to create a new method. It's going to be called input, and we're going to just uh, do a console log now to see what's happening once we type and make sure everything is working correctly. So we're expecting this to be called every time we type something. Let's try it out. So you can see this is actually getting called and that is working correctly with console logging those dots. It turns out you don't actually have to provide the parentheses when you call a function. We could do something like this, but we don't have to. If we don't provide any arguments, however, the first argument by default is going to be the native JavaScript event, which I'm going to call event by convention. You can name this variable whatever you like, but if we are able to access that without passing our own value, we're going to get the native JavaScript event. So let's do a go ahead and try this one out. If I now type something in, I'm getting the native JavaScript event. And if we have a look in here, we have all the usual properties you might expect to see. Uh, this is very interesting and very useful for a few reasons. The main reason it's useful here is we're able to access the value of the input by saying event.target.value. And if we go ahead and console log that one, we're going to see it's logging the current value of the input. At the moment, the current value of the input is saved here in the HTML element. And it's much more ideal if we can save it in data because that way we can use it to do some validation. So what I'm going to do is create a new value here called value. I'm just going to set it to be null by default. But what we're going to do is jump up here and we're going to bind to this value here. So for now, if I don't bind it and make it value, it's just going to be value, which is uh, very interesting, uh, un uninteresting. It's exactly what you would expect. What we can do, however, is the binding. Uh, we're going to use a shorthand instead of using uh, vbind. You could do it like this if you like. I much prefer the shorthand though. What we're going to do is bind to a value called value, which I've created down here. And I'm just going to make it, uh, let's call it user for now. And if we save this one off, head back to our browser, we can see it's now binding to that variable correctly. So what's happening here is it's realizing there's a colon here. So it's going to evaluate this JavaScript expression. In this case, the JavaScript expression is just a variable. So it's just going to return the word user. What we've done here is move the complexity again out of the DOM and out of the template into our, our data function, which is going to be a good thing usually. We can now operate on this value and validate it. So the next thing we're going to do is make sure we're updating this correctly. So what we're going to do is instead of logging the event.target.value, we're going to say this.value is equal to event.target.value and update that correctly. Now, instead of letting the HTML element contain the state of the, the input, we're going to have the state down here in our data function. So we're accepting the value here and we're updating it down here. And this is a good thing. We're now able to easily validate this. We're going to see an incorrect way of validating this and we're going to then see a more correct way. What we could do is create a new variable called error. And then if there is an error, we come up here and render it. So let's just try this out and see if it works. We can just use vif to conditionally render the error. And if there is an error, we're going to say error. And then the next thing we need to do is actually see if the input is too short. I'm going to say you need to put at least seven characters for your username. So what we're going to do is come down to our input and we're going to say if this.value.length is less than seven, we're going to update that error and we're just going to say too short. And if it's not, we're just going to say this.error is equal to null because it's going to be long enough, which means we're going to need the else statement. Let's go ahead and try this one out. Let's come back to the browser. We haven't actually entered anything, so it hasn't had a chance to update the error. So it's currently null as what we set it to by default. But if we start typing, we can see this is too short and it's rendering the error message. Once it's long enough, the error message is going to go away. And this is a perfectly good solution, but we can do a little bit better. If you remember earlier, we talked about computed properties and those are derived values. And in this case, the error is really derived from the value. It's no real meaning by itself. It's completely based on another variable's value. So what we're going to do is change this into a computed property. I'm going to delete error here and we're going to create a new computed property called error. And as you might remember, a computed property is a function with no arguments. And what we're going to do is move this check from the input up into the computed property. So we're going to come up here. And then instead of setting an error value, we're just going to return the error. So return too short. Otherwise, we don't have to return anything at all. So this becomes a little bit more simple as well. Let's go ahead and try this one out. I'm going to save it off, head back to the browser. 
We can see this is now validating automatically. It's too short, so it's rendering the error. And if we type enough characters, it's going to be too long and it's going to go away. And this is a significant improvement. Our code got a whole lot more simple and we've reduced the duplication. Instead of having two variables, we just have one and then we derive the value by using a computed property up here. So this is our kind of first real project. This is something you could definitely use in a real project when you're making some form validation. And we're going to see how we can make this a little bit better in the next video by using vModel.